welcome to Motor and Gas Show. Uh, a few questions for both of you. One is Volvo buses have been in India since 2001 and perhaps I think you're the first company in the CV segment to bring a true bus chassis concept, low flow city and a lot of new technological things, you know. All this radically changed the way Indian, Indians travel, okay. Can you briefly take us through that journey? How was it? Was it frustrating? Did it have its own set of challenges? Could you? You've been there since the inception, I'm sure. Well, first of all, I've had the privilege to be the first bus employee in India. Uh, Wonderful. Way back in 1997. Suresh came around the same time uh, in trucks. And then uh, sometime in uh, 2005 or six moved over to Volvo buses. So there's a lot of history which we can share with you. Uh, for us then, it's been a long journey. I think it's great to see the picture we have for ourselves here in India. Of course, expectations are much more and higher. Uh, and I think that over a period of time, that will also come true in India. But going back to the past, I mean, when we started out with our first commercialization of buses in India way back in 2001. The concept was front engine built on a truck chassis. Manufacturers would sell only a chassis and you had to go to an external bodybuilder to build a body. So with Volvo coming in, that was one of the key things as you mentioned which changed. We brought in rear engine, we brought in bus chassis and we brought in a complete bus concept. The effect of that was very positive in the initial years. Uh, especially in the long distance segment where we started from and then over a period of time having started in 2001 in 2006 we moved to low floor air conditioned city buses which in itself was a revolution because all city buses in India were built on a high floor concept you had to climb three steps and get into a bus and again they were front engine city buses so if I could uh, sum up we have today over 5,000 buses on the road. Uh, we have presence more or less in the long distance. Our buses are touching more or less every town in uh, India. And when it comes to city buses, which we started then not 15 years back, but 10 years back, we have presence in over 30 cities in India with over 1,500 low floor uh, air conditioned state-of-the-art city buses in the premium segment. Okay, that's been a wonderful journey. But in 2014, you unveiled the UD buses brand. Uh, now, that, that's targeted at, at a value segment, you know. Now, what does it all mean? I mean, do you compromise in any way in terms of comfort or safety? Or are they modeled differently? So, I think as we went across our journey, a number of other things happened. Uh, we started out as a chassis manufacturer for a short while. We built up India's first complete bus uh, company in 2007 as Volvo Buses India Private Limited. And that is wherein we brought in our global complete bus manufacturing concepts into the plant where we again invested heavily from 2011 onwards in order to have a much broader role in India. And with that, uh, one thing was clearly visible through our, our customers primarily in the private space as well as in the state and city corporations were fairly vocal about the fact that we like your buses, you have our strong support and we have built premium category transport brands with you whether in private or in state corporations but we would like also you to take the next step and bring something for a higher volume base on the value segment. And that's where the thought process started from about three, four years back. We got into action. And now then in 2014, we introduced, uh, we announced rather, that we will introduce UD as a local brand in India, primarily targeted at the value segment, which would mean that in large cities, it could be an option to, uh, where if you have the premium city buses running in the center, you could have the, comp we could be complementing the same with value buses on the outskirts of the city. 
uh, in B category cities, the value bus would become the main mode of transportation. And it's with that thinking that we started with UD. Maybe Suresh, you could give a few words with uh, the trials which we are doing with our first UD city buses in India at this moment. Taking from Akash, uh, what was announced last year uh, uh, really go through this year when we put the first buses on the road. At this point of time, we have uh, decided to start the commercial rollout with some trials uh, with different customers and the first ones that are being done with Bangalore. Uh, very happy to mention that the first two buses given to Bangalore are already running for two months and given the fact that these are first prototypes, uh, we have covered extremely good journey so far. Buses have come, from, come for extremely good appreciation from the passengers. Uh, the experience has been as good as what they would have expected to. And at the same time, from a technical perspective, there have been a breakdowns or technical issues. I would have appreciated them as, as much as any other brand on the road. So I think we are uh, very proud of what we've achieved just with the prototypes. Uh, okay. Later this year, we will start the promotion program. Okay, these would be definitely much more affordable than bigger buses. Uh, of course, I mean, whatever we do within the group with different brands, it revolves around our uh, core values. Uh, and therefore, from that point of view, the buses would still be high on performance, would still be uh, have the safety and the quality and environmental norms in place. Uh, UD does stand for reliability, so that is what uh, we are looking forward to. And then India has an excellent opportunity, especially in the city segment, where the government has been talking about the smart city concept. And therefore, with the smart city concept coming in, with Make in India and Swatch Bharat being main campaigns, I think we as a uh, company here fit in very well. With already buses made in India, we have uh, products uh, for uh, different kind of products, both in city and long distance segments to meet the need as Prime Minister has highlighted uh, on smart cities and so on and so forth. Okay, and, and can you tell us very briefly about your plant uh, near Bangalore? I mean, what are the capacities there and, and, and even your current buses, uh, what are the localization levels? Could you throw some light on that? Yeah, so uh, for me, uh, India is an important part of uh, the international business I manage. So Shri Prasad and team have done a good job uh, with the local operations in India. We have invested uh, heavily in expansion over the last three to four years. We now have uh, taken, if required, on a single shift basis, capacities of premium buses, both on city and inter city, and inter -city to about uh, 1,500. So that is what we can go to. And then, of course, it's always easy to make it double shift and so on and so forth if the requirement comes in. Uh, so the facility is uh, like any other modern Volvo facility at any other place uh, around the world. And what is most important is it, the facility is built up, keeping exports in mind. And the facility has been exporting for the last couple of years in addition to meeting the domestic needs. Okay, so I mean, if you were to talk about the numbers, I mean, what portion is exported out? And is it the entire bus or, or, or the chassis or what? How is it done? I think we are uh, we are in the startup of our export journey. Of course, already ten years back, we started to export buses to neighboring countries in South Asia. Since the last few years, we're exporting to South Africa, and the team has also been preparing over the last three four years which has now resulted in us announcing last month that we will, from early next year, export buses to Europe. So whenever buses are exported, they are exported as complete built units, as we do domestically in India. Okay. <clears throat> There's another interesting part is the, the Volvo Electro Mobility Program. You know, we find now, we heard about hybrid buses, now even Volvo's announced uh, electric buses back in Sweden and, and different parts of the globe. And they're selling well. I think you've sold more than 5,000 across 20 odd countries. Now with the Indian government talking so much about it, all these things, do you, do you hope to see these buses here in India? So I think as Volvo Group already in 2007, I think, we put in seven different types of technologies over and above diesel technology, uh, like CNG, dimethyl, ethanol, hybrid, electric, and so on and so forth. In Europe, uh, both on trucks and buses, for uh, coming to a clear roadmap as to going forward, 
what is the most efficient mode of transportation, keeping the operator, keeping the passenger and so on so in mind. It came out fairly clearly that there would be electromobility will be the path forward. While other technologies will prevail, they will have challenges as they have had over the last 30 years to scale up and also to be, they will not be universally available across the world. So electromobility is a path which Volvo Group started in 2007. As you rightly said, thousands of Volvo hybrids are running across the world. They've been very well received. And the, now we have started to focus, especially for the last year, year and a half on Asia. With already bringing in our hybrids towards this side in Australia, in Singapore and so on and so forth. Uh, we are playing a big role in China with the electromobility. And then it's good to see and heartening to see that the Indian government, while it is talking about scaling up from Bharat stage 4 to 5 and 6, at the same time, rightfully so, they are looking into electromobility. So amongst the large manufacturers, the top five in the world, Volvo probably is the only company which is so well invested today in electromobility. And we launched our first electric buses demo units in Gothenburg in Sweden in June this year. They are running quite well and they are absolutely uh, zero emission or pollution free. Coming to India, I think the roadmap will start very much from hybrid buses. We are working very closely with regulatory authorities, uh, the local team here. And what I get to hear is that we contribute towards what uh, standards can be set based on the global experience. But also with fame coming in, the government is offering good subsidies and we see very high interest from certain selected state and city corporations which want to go uh, that route. So very soon you will uh, hear more from us in the hybrid space on products towards electromobility manufactured out here in India. Wonderful. And before I move on to the last question, one question for you Suresh. We moved into a new bus code and a lot of new changes have taken place. Uh, was it difficult for, or was it very easy for Volvo to just move into the next new level which Mr. Garman has right, set? Uh, I need to put things in perspective. For us, uh, we started to invest on what would be the next level of inputs into the bus quite early. And the fact that uh, there was a good industry and uh, authority engagement in it also gave us a lead in which direction we need to work. So when the demands on us were to implement the same from 1st of, August, 1st of April, I think we were the first company to be ready already. And many of them we did willingly and not waiting for the road to happen. And uh, I think we're extremely proud of the fact that we did the job for us. Fantastic. One last question. The buzzwords are, of course, make in India, smart cities coming up, hundreds of them, hopefully. You know, does that mean for Volvo buses a mega opportunity and, of course, a grand commitment in this country? I think that uh, the cost of not being humble at this moment for a moment, uh, it was Volvo Group which was the first Western global manufacturer to take that step already in India 17 years back with trucks and 15 years back with buses. Uh, we are rather happy to see that, uh, seeing that success, there are other global manufacturers following the same route uh, over the last year or two. And I think that that builds up kind of a combination wherein we all can uh, together promote and bring more international and latest solutions into India. India is the world's second largest by population, heading very soon to be the largest. From that perspective, if you look at the availability of public transport in comparison to the averages in different countries around the world, and I talk from experience of 203 countries where we as Volvo Group operate, India has one of the lowest averages. So there is enormous opportunity. We as Volvo Group are very well invested here to take care of that opportunity. The last three, four years have been challenging on the economic front. We see that now both central and different state governments, as you rightly described, are taking a number of actions. What they are stating and wanting manufacturers to do, Volvo has already done that. And I think that we're looking forward to see or eat the fruits of this success and very much contribute 
with different technologies and 100 year of experience of Volvo Group in India, in different parts and different cities and different uh, long distance routes. Okay, thank you so much and wish you both the very best, Mr. Akash and Mr. Suresh. Thank you so much. Thank you. For the latest news and reviews, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook.